Hey everyone, I'm going to be starting off this season of Cubing World with two videos that are not about blindfolded solving. Uh, these two videos are going to be about edge control, which is basically the process of orienting as many edges as possible during F2L. Uh, I know I'm not the fastest 3x3 solver, I average you know, around 16 seconds, um, but I do know quite a bit about edge orientation because of my background with the Petrus method. Uh, and it's a technique that I use a lot for one-handed solving. Uh, and so, basically, the goal of this is to, with adding as few moves as possible, end up in a situation where when you get to the last layer, all of your edges are oriented. Which, as you probably know, for one-handed is a pretty big advantage, because not only are your are the OLLs uh, with the edges oriented to gen, which makes them nice for one-handed, uh, you also have the opportunity to use last layer systems like COLL, EPLL, which favor uh, one-handed solving. Um, so I'm going to be turning the key one-handed during these videos uh, because these are these are techniques that I mostly use for one-handed. So bear in mind uh, as as I go through these that um, these are techniques that you can use to whatever extent you want to, depending on how important it is for you to end up with edges oriented. If you could care less uh, which one of the 57 OLLs you get, then by all means ignore this entirely, but if you if you love the seven uh, edges oriented cases, then you, it might be worth it for you to spend a few extra moves to get oriented cases. Uh, so anyway, all I'm going to be talking about this video is what to do uh, is when to do a sledgehammer and when not to. So if you don't know what a sledgehammer it is, uh, I'm just going to show you right now. So basically, when you have a pair that's not that's not in its slot, but it's but has been created, there are two main ways to insert it. The first way is just a normal insertion, which looks like this: R U prime R prime, or it could be on the left side, um, L prime U prime L. Um, uh, but the other way that you can insert it is to do a sledgehammer, which is R prime, F, R, F prime. Uh, and so basically, uh, that's just a different way of inserting it. But if you look closely, it misorients some edges. So, so just to undo what I've done, I'm going to do a sledgehammer backwards, and then you can watch what's happening uh, as I do it. So here is the position that is solved by a sledgehammer. And if you look, this edge here is oriented is oriented incorrectly, and this edge here is oriented incorrectly with respect to um, R and U. And what I mean by that is that if I insert this edge using using the R U approach, which is obviously U R U prime R prime, uh, that edge down here is going to end up misoriented. And it's easy to tell that because you can see that if I did an R, it would be facing away from this center. And so I can tell that if I do an RU insert, um, it's going to end up pointed away from this center. Uh, and that's not good. And this edge, obviously, since the top color is facing away from this center, is also misoriented. Uh, and so we can see that doing a sledgehammer uh, changes the orientation of the UF edge and the FR edge. So, uh, sorry about that, these two edges. Uh, and as I do the sledgehammer, you can see why that happens, because basically what the sledgehammer does is it pulls pulls this edge in with an F and pulls it out with an R. Um, and so basically, when you pull an edge in with an F and push it out with an R, that's going to change its orientation. So if we look at the other edge, this edge, right, instead of pulling it out with an R, which would make it uh, misoriented, doing a sledgehammer will pull it out with an F move, and therefore it ends up oriented. Um, so, so basically the most, the most basic thing to understand uh, when talking about edge orientation during F2L is that 
is that one orientation arises from moving an edge out with R, and the other orientation arises from moving the edge out with F. Uh, and that's easy to see, because just looking at this, this piece right here, using an R, pulling it out with an R, will um, put the red sticker on top, and using an F will put the yellow sticker on top, on top. So that's why when I do this, that's why I can flip this edge here, uh, like I can flip this edge here, um, sorry, the one that started back here, by pulling it in with an RU alg and then pulling it out with a sledgehammer. Because the RU alg pulls it in with RU, um, or the R layer, and then the sledgehammer takes it out with F. And so that ends up misoriented. Um, but if you don't understand that, that's okay. The most important thing to understand for this video is that uh, doing a sledgehammer, uh, R prime F, R F prime changes the orientation of this edge and this edge with respect to the R layer. Uh, obviously on the left you have the mirror of that for your sledgehammer, uh, so that's just going to be L F prime L prime F, um, and that one will of course uh, change the orientation of this edge and this edge, just the mirror of what we had before. Uh, so the way to take advantage of this during F2L is whenever you have a made pair, which for, I don't know, for me it occurs about half the time, about half the time my F2L algs end with RUR prime, in which case this is a very impractical approach because you don't end up with your pair sitting there ready for a sledgehammer. Um, but the other half of the time my F2L alg ends with a pair just sitting there normally, in which case uh, I have a choice whether to insert it uh, with R and U, or whether to insert it with a sledgehammer. Uh, and so basically, you can probably see what I'm building to, but uh, if you're interested in edge orientation during your F2L, it might be a good idea to ask yourself for each pair whether you want to insert it with uh, an RU or with a sledgehammer, which would change the orientation of this edge and this edge. And note that uh, doing R's and U's would not change the orientation of any of the edges. Uh, with respect to R and U, of course. Um, uh, so, yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and do an example solve. Um, let's see. Okay, so uh, here we are. Um, so I'm going to solve the white cross here. Um, so I can solve these two edges like that. Um, they're solved in relation to each other. And then I can solve uh, this edge and this edge like this. So I, I just drop this edge in while inserting this. Um, if that's a bad cross, uh, don't laugh at me because I'm not, I'm not extremely good at cross making. Okay, so the first pair I see uh, is this corner and this edge, which I'll do like this, insert the corner and then insert the edge. And the next pair I see is this corner down here, and that's being paired with this edge. So pull the corner out, and then put them in 2-gen. And then the next pair I see is these two right here. Um, and so I'm going to do RUR prime to pair them up. And then here I have a decision to make uh, about whether I want to insert with a sledgehammer or with um, RU. Uh, because, as you can see, the pair is made and it's ready to be inserted. Uh, so the key for that is to look at the orientations of this edge here and this edge here, which are the two whose orientations would be changed uh, by doing a sledgehammer. Uh, so here we have... Um, so, so this edge is not part of our last layer. So actually we don't really care about its orientation. But this edge, if we look, doing an R to put it into the top layer, would leave it misoriented. So we, we want to change its orientation and therefore we do a sledgehammer instead of RU and this edge ends up oriented. Uh, and then we just finish our F2L. Uh, this is a three move pair and as you can see we get one of our coveted um, one of our coveted uh, edges oriented last layer cases. So if you know COLL this would be a good time to use it. Um, I don't so I'm just going to do that, and then I have a G-perm. Um, 
so that's basically the gist of it. Uh, feel free to play around with that. Uh, discover stuff on your own. Next week's video is going to be about uh, choosing choosing other F2L algs wisely other than just sledgehammers. Um, if that seems like too much for you, uh, then then feel free to you know take it slow. But I really recommend you know trying to decide when to use a sledgehammer and when not to, because just a little bit of consciousness about what edges are oriented and what edges are not can really help you avoid those nasty dot OLLs. Thanks for watching.